What up, what up? It's Grant, your sixth favorite YouTuber, baby. We feeling good today. So this video is how to get God level self-esteem. And you may have seen the TikTok that summarized this very quickly, but I'm going to go into a little more detail on how to actually get God level self-esteem. Now, these are just arguments that I've learned to put in my head over time. These are perspectives that I've learned to get in my head over time. And now I am to the point where I have good self-esteem, right? So let's cover how to actually go from no self-esteem to self-esteem. The first thing I want to cover is that everybody has quote unquote self-esteem problems. What do I mean by that? I mean like a lot of people think that they are special because they have issues, right? And you're not. So a lot of people are like, well, I have self-esteem problems because my parents were like this to me. I have a lot of self-esteem problems because my, my parents weren't even there. I had a lot of self-esteem problems because I had this teacher that blah, 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 right? You're going to have a million reasons. The truth is nobody is born with insane self-esteem. It's crafted. It's built. And sometimes it's built early in life by a parent and the kid downloading the right perspectives. Usually, 99% of the time, you're on your own and you have to fix this stuff as an adult. So I'm in your same boat because I went from very low self-esteem to having the self-esteem that I have now. And you can fix it. So understand that self-esteem is literally just a skill. It's literally just a skill stack that you can learn just like anything else. So that's, that's the good news, right? Um, and it should also be freeing because a lot of people are like, well, because this stuff happened in my past, I'm damaged. And this is why I have self-esteem issues. No, it's, it's not the case. The truth is everybody's got to work on this stuff. So you just got to build in the right perspectives. And the thing is, let's say that was true and you have self-esteem issues because of all these different reasons. Who cares? What are you going to do? Just not have self-esteem forever? No, you got to fix this stuff eventually. So don't worry about how you got to where you got. Worry about fixing the issue that you are facing now. And your therapy isn't going to tell you that one, okay? So let's jump in. Number one, your opinion of yourself is subjective. What does this mean? This means that the way that you view yourself is your opinion, right? You could think that you're an idiot or you could think that you were God on earth. Which one's correct? Neither or both, however you look at it. So the key here is if you can choose to think of yourself positively or to think of yourself negatively, why would you not just choose the positive one? And a lot of the times people are deluded both ways. What I mean by that is people are like, well, I'm a fucking piece of trash. I'm a little bitch. I don't do this. I'm a piece of crap, right? And it's like, well, you're not because you're kind of just bagging on yourself, right? So that's delusion. That is complete delusion, but they have no problem deluding themselves in the negative. But if you say, hey, think of yourself as a God on earth or hey, think of yourself as worthy of love. Let's just start there, right? Think of yourself as worthy of a fucking hug and somebody saying that they like you. That to them is mind blowing. So it's like you're deluding yourself in the negative. Why not just delude yourself in the positive? Because you're in the land of delusion anyway, and you get to pick these things, so why not choose to go positive with it, right? And the reason is because you have self-esteem issues, right? So that's what we're trying to fix. Now, number two, massively important. Control your language and your self-talk. At the core of it, all self-image is, all self-esteem is, is a series of statements and beliefs that we tell ourselves about who we think we are, okay? Now, here's the crazy part about who we think we are. It's a story. It's literally just stories that we tell ourselves, right? Let's say you think you're good at basketball. And so when you tell your story to people, hey, I'm the basketball guy, because you're identifying as a basketball guy. I'm the basketball guy, and I play basketball, and I train basketball, and I do this, and I do that, right? Well, it's like, okay, Ron, well, you also eat a lot of food every day, and you also drink water every day. So how come we don't identify as the guy who eats food? How come we don't identify as the guy who buys a bunch of different shoes at every thing of his life? The reason is because you don't identify as a food person. If you were, then you would disregard the basketball stuff in your life and you would put the emphasis on all the food that you eat. Does that make sense? So literally all these events are happening in our life and we put different weights on them and we create a story around them based on what we think we want, based on the image that we want to tell ourselves. So literally your self-esteem is just a fucking story. And this should be amazing uh, amazingly freeing because once you realize it's a story and stories are just series of statements, once you can start auditing the series of statements that you're telling yourself, you can literally just replace them with positive thoughts. Because again, if you're going to delude yourself anyway, might as well delude yourself in the positive so you can actually help yourself and achieve the results that you want in your life. Okay. Now, you have to basically police your own mind. This is meditation 101. If you guys want to know how to meditate or you want to, get a, you want to know how to meditate a little bit better, I have a meditation video on what it actually is, how you can do it, and why it's important. But let's assume you already know it's important. Basically, all you're doing is you're being aware of the thoughts and stories you're telling yourself. So every time you're like, God damn, I suck. Or God damn, I'm an idiot. You, God damn, I'm, I am an idiot. There's a tongue twister. Um, that wasn't even a tongue twister. I just can't speak. 
So when you're like, oh, uh, when you're beating yourself up, right? We're like, oh, I'm an idiot. Catch that and then literally be like, nope, not going to think that and then replace it with something positive. So let's say you do something, it doesn't go your way and you're like, God, I'm a fucking idiot. God, I suck. Wait a second. I'm telling the story again. Okay. Nope, not going to do that. That's awesome because I tried. I, I put another shot out into the universe. Great job, Grant. You did amazing. So you're catching these negative statements and you're replacing them because self-esteem issues are literally just stories you're repeating over and over again. So quite literally, you replace the statements, you've replaced your self-esteem once your belief catches on. So you first you change the statements, then your belief follows. Now, here's a couple other ideas that you can use to get amazing self-esteem. You want to detach from outer results. You want to detach your self-esteem from outer results in the world and you want to attach them to your commitment to the journey. For example, I have really good self-esteem, but there's people that are richer than me. There's people that are more attractive than me, maybe. There's people that are funnier than me, perhaps. There's people that are, you know, um, they have more sauce than me, maybe. But all I put my weight on is that I'm moving forward in the right path. So even though I'm not the richest person in the world, even though that I'm not the most attractive person in the world, even though that I'm not X and Y and whatever, I'm not the funniest person in the world, right? Low-key, I think Theo Vaughn might be because he's hilarious. Um, I don't let these comparisons get me down because I don't compare myself to other people. I compare myself to me and my own journey. So it's basically like, Hey Grant, did you wake up and go towards your goals today? Yes. Awesome. You did amazing. There we go. Now it doesn't matter if somebody's richer than me. It doesn't matter if somebody's farther along on the exact same journey that I'm on because I'm on my own fucking path. Right. And that leads me to the next one. Life is a one player game, but also here's the funny part. Like If you don't have the results that you want in your life and somebody else has the results that you want in your life, they deserve it because they have it. So they put in the work and they've gotten the thing. If you don't have the stuff, you haven't put in the work to get the thing yet. You're too early in your journey. The universe is not crazy enough to reward undeserving people. So you have to earn literally what you want. You have to deserve what you want in a literal way. Like you have to put in the work and get the thing. The universe is strictly cause and effect. You do one thing, you get one thing, right? I bring this bottle up and I drop it, it falls. It's just, it's that simple. So if you don't have the thing, what you're basically doing is like, oh, well, they have all this stuff that I want. Well, yeah, because they put in the work and got it and you haven't. So would you think you're just magically going to get it? It doesn't make any sense. But life is a one player game. Nobody's journey matches your own, literally. So all your unique experiences, all your unique perspectives, all the different things that have happened at certain times in your life had to happen like that for a reason. You are where you are right now in life because of past decisions that you've made, because of past events that you've went through, because of past circumstances that you've been placed in, right? Everything has to happen for a reason if you view it like that. Now, if you're caught in comparison, your reticular activation system is going to be blind to your blessings. Here's what I mean. Your reticular activation system is basically where you focus in life. For example, let's say you just drive around and you don't really ever see Jettas, but then you start shopping for Jettas. Now, all of a sudden, you see Jettas everywhere, right? That's probably happened to you with something. You didn't notice something in the universe, then your focus kind of turns to it, and now you see it everywhere, right? That's called your reticular, reticular activation system filtering information because at any given moment, there's billions of stimuli that go into our brain. Our brain filters them all out except for about 40. And then our reticular activation system focuses on one, right? And so what you want to do is put that on the negative because right now, if you don't have self-esteem, your reticular activation system is focusing on the bad things about yourself. So you're going to see all the negative things about yourself super easily. But the downside is you're completely blind to all the things that are positive. So in the same way, when your reticular activation system is focused on Jettas, you don't see all the other semi-trucks. You don't see all the other, you know, Passats. All the other cars are invisible to you because you're focused on Jettas. So in the same way, you're only focusing on the negative parts of yourself and all the positive things are completely blind. So you have to flip this. You have to put your reticular activation system on the positive things about yourself. So you train it right? Every day. It's like a, it's a habitual. So you wake up, you're like, okay, oh, I'm going negative. Nope. I'm going to think about some things positive about me. You say a couple positive things, right? And you can delude yourself because you're deluding yourself either way. And then eventually your brain's going to be like, oh, I'm going to find positive things now. And then it will happen automatically. Then it automatically polices the thoughts and replaces them with positive ones, like a freaking system, like an automated system. So again, life is a one player game. It's quite literally dumb to compare your life to anybody else's because they're not from your situation. You have completely different circumstances. And also you're, again, you're putting 
blinders on for your blessing. So that person that has all the stuff. That, so basically, if you're comparing yourself to somebody else, you're using one little metric of, of life and you're saying, well, they have this better than me. They're better than me. That's a very naive, immature way to view life because you have a lot of blessings right now, like your health or your family or anything that they don't have. There's something that you have that they don't have that you're looking over and you're, you're completely minimizing it because your RAS is in the wrong spot. Again, you have bad self-esteem because your perspectives suck. So this is all about fixing your perspectives. Now, again, you keep your blinders on, you stay in your lane. It sounds super cheesy, but it's literally just compare yourself to who you are yesterday. And that should be freeing. You should feel a weight lift off your shoulders when you're like, wait a second, Grant, I don't have to compare myself to somebody else. No, you don't. You just compare it to your own life. Because here's the crazy part. With social media, with Instagram, with Facebook, back in the day, right, you were just in your small little town. So you were like comparing yourself to James Dean who was on the corner, right? Because James Dean had a couple tractors and you were like, you know what? One day I want some tractors. And then you get your first tractor and you're like, okay, I got one tractor. Nobody else has one, but James has two. I'm going to get two one day, right? So you're only comparing yourself to a very small pool of people. The problem is now with social media, you're comparing yourself to literally everybody else on earth. You're comparing yourself to the top person in the world in every domain of your life at the exact same time. Think about how insane that is. I coined this internet sadness syndrome because this is absolutely fucking crazy. We are comparing ourselves to the best people on earth in every single metric of our lives at the same time. No wonder people are sad because they can't control their perspectives because they can't stay in their own lane, right? So now all of a sudden, not only do, do you see everybody in the world that has more tractors than you, but you see everybody that's more attractive than you and funnier than you and richer than you and who has a hotter girlfriend than you and this and that and that at the same time. So if you play in that game, you're probably going to feel like crap, right? Well, don't feel like crap because you can completely remove your comparison from other people and put it on your own life. Life is a one player game, okay? Now, what you can also do is create your own games of value. So you put your personal goalposts on what you think is valuable. You put them on your natural strengths and your cultivated skills so you can win your own game. Here's an example. Let's say I'm in a room and Elon Musk walks in, right? Elon Musk is astoundingly more richer than I will ever be in my life, right? So now what could I do? I could be like, well, he's way richer than me, so he's cooler than me. Well, he's way more famous than me, so he's cooler than me. But guess what? In that room, I feel like we're on the same playing field because I have good self-esteem. So he walks in, I'm saying things like, well, he's got a bunch of money, but I'm funnier. Well, he's got a bunch of money, but I got more sauce than he does. Well, and I, and I love that yelling, right? But this is the stuff that you have to say to protect your own self-esteem. So then it's like, well, he's got all this money, but I do this. Well, he's got all this money, but I'm better with girls. Well, he's got all this money, but you know, I put in 16 reps in the gym for 20 hours a day. And that is to me is more important than cat, whatever it is, you're going to have your own arguments to put it in your own thing. So notice how my own arguments were my own strengths, right? I was like, well, he's got a bunch of money, but I'm funny. Well, he's got a bunch of money, but I got more personality. Well, he's got a bunch of money, but you know, I can talk quicker, whatever it is, right? So I'm just literally putting the, the things that I value for self-esteem on what I can win on the games that I can win. So in the same way, stop playing somebody else's games of value. Stop playing what society thinks is valuable. Oh, money and this and that. And you can play those things, but you want to compare yourself to yourself, right? And you want to, if you get in a situation where you feel like you're smaller than somebody else, look at your blessings, realize you're just being a fucking little naive bitch and put the blinders on and switch the game of value. Put them on your strengths. Flip reticular racism to focus on the positives, not the negatives. Right? And lastly, and this is so important, your self-respect is directly tied to your self-esteem. And your self-esteem is directly tied to your self-respect. So the question becomes, for self-esteem, how, what do you need to do to respect yourself? Now here's the problem. Sometimes what you have to do to respect yourself is so insanely unachievable that you're not even in the land of reality. So maybe what you have to do is lower these things for, for what you can do to respect yourself Get the little ones done so you can start building some self-confidence, self-respect, and self-esteem. Start keeping the little promises to yourself and then actually move forward. But here's the biggest one. Following your, soul, following your soul's journey solves all your self-esteem issues. So there's a life that you know that you have to live. There's, a, there's something in your soul 
calling out to you that says, I have to do this because this is the thing that God or the universe or whatever put into my soul, right? We don't choose these things. They are implanted in us at birth from whatever reason, from whoever does it, right? Maybe we're in a simulation. Maybe it was God. Maybe it was the universe, whatever you want to call it. There's a, there's a path that your life needs to go that is itching for you to try out. You're like, you know what? I think this is the right way. And you're ignoring it every single day. As long as you ignore that calling, you will not have self-esteem because there's going to be a little voice in the back of your head that's like, well, I'm a little bitch because I'm fucking bearing this dream every single day, right? But the fact of the matter is, once you actually grow up, and it's not, people are like, well, you need, you need balls to do that. No, you don't. It's a natural fucking thing to do. Society's brainwashed you into thinking that this is a big deal. You should naturally follow your interests. Kids, they just naturally do what they want to do. They don't have all this mental, whoa, I need some balls to not follow the societal path. No, they don't care, right? They don't give a shit. And also, that brings me to another point, which is life is a one-player game, so nobody's opinion on your own life should reign supreme over yours, right? If you want to start a business and your parents are like, well, you're going to be a doctor. Well, you got to do this. You got to do that. Fuck them, right? Do what you want to do. Why, does, why are you giving their opinion weight over your own life? Why are you giving anybody's opinion weight over your own life? Because it's your own fucking life. The people that your opinions that you're afraid of, they're not even thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. Like, oh, I gotta fix my problems today. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. Oh, no, no, no. oh, there's John. Hey, John, don't do that. Be a doctor. Oh, no, 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 I'm doing this, right? It's one little offhand comment of three seconds of focusing on you that they go right back to focusing on the bullshit in their own life. And then you're weighing out these comments like it's fucking gospel. They don't even fucking care what you do. They just want you to be okay. So stop listening to everybody else's opinions and do the thing that you want to do. All your self-esteem problems will be fixed if you just follow your fucking soul's calling. Go do the thing that you know you need to do. And you don't have to fully quit anything. You don't have to bail from your job, right? Oh my God, look at this curl. It's going crazy. Um, you don't have to bail from your job. You don't have to quit the thing that you're doing right now. You see, to put a game plan together to attack your goals with absolute ferocious velocity, right? And then start making steps there. Because what happens is when you have a bad day, when you catch a couple losses, when you get dumped, when shit happens, you're going to default to this. And this is, well, at least I'm fucking doing what I was put on this earth to do. I'm getting goosebumps. I should end the video right fucking there. Because that's the point. If you have self-esteem problems, you are not on your own journey, right? You are not on your own path. So number one is following your soul's calling. That's going to do 90% of the work. And the other 10% is fixing the self-talk. But when you're on your soul's calling, you're going to have self-respect and your self-talk is really going to fix itself. That's how you do it. Because no matter what happens, you get rejected. People are mean to you. Your girlfriend breaks up with you. You go bankrupt. Whatever the fuck it is, you're always going to come back to, well, at least I am doing what I was put on this earth to do. And that is something that you can stand by. And even if you take, and even if you fucking die, you took it to the grave because you did what the fuck you had to do. Deuces.